Thank you for tuning in and joining us for today's webinar. I'm Michiko Evangelista and I'm going to be your host for today. Um, for everyone who's watching, again, thank you and welcome to this session. Um, before we start introducing our guest speaker, I would like to greet some of our viewers. Hello and welcome. Miko Arobel. Hello, Johnny Carigo, Marie Lorbis, and Clarissa Glino. Hi, thank you for tuning in. Okay, so all right, for today's FB Live, our guest speaker will share all things that and what does it take to be called one. This webinar is entitled Father's Day Message. Our guest speaker will show or share with us personal experiences and what he have learned firsthand by being a dad. He is not only a father, but also a speaker for over a decade now. He has spoken to audiences worldwide and now a best-selling author of Unique, Understanding Others by Understanding You. Please welcome Mr. Jason Law. Jason Law is an entrepreneur by heart. He is a speaker, trainer, and author. For over a decade, Jason has given more than a thousand talks for a wide variety of organizations locally. I'm going to be sharing with you something that is going to be your competitive advantage. He has pioneered startup companies in various businesses as a multi-industry entrepreneur. He has spoken to in different countries like Cambodia, Singapore, Australia, Kuwait, and more. Jason's expertise is regularly featured on radio and nationwide TV shows. He has authored several best-selling books, including Unique, Understanding Others by Understanding You. Unique is a signature program which is used by different organizations as an invaluable resource in achieving people skills applicable in any environment. Jason believes that people are the most important resource and asset. The power of the other, the only way for us to move to the next level is having a strong team around you. Now, listen, learn, and live out the priceless life principles you will discover from the man himself, Jason Law. Welcome, Sir Jason. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. By the way, before we start our program, we would like to um, tell our viewers that we have a short a short Q&A session before right uh, or right after the talk, right bef uh, right after the end of the talk. So, to our viewers, if you have questions to Mr. Jason Law, um, you can comment your questions below. So, Sir J so J Sir Jason, um, you can start your talk right now. Thank you, Michiko, and thank you, Fami, for having me. It's a joy and privilege, and I'm Jason. I have been married for 17 years, have two daughters, a 12-year-old and a 10-year-old, and we have a long, long way to go. And the uh, father won a toy in a raffle, and he gathered his children, his five children, and asked which one should receive, should get the toy. Who is the, the one among you who listens to mom all the time, who doesn't talk back to her 
and who always obeys her. And all five kids in unison said, Daddy! <laughs> so happy Father's Day to everyone, all the dads here. And if you're a, a wife, happy Father's Day, happy Dad's Day to your hubby. And you know, parenting is the most difficult thing, the most difficult job we would ever take. In fact, it was so, it's so difficult that mothers, when they have their babies, they have their baby, it's called labor. So immediately you are laboring. And once that baby's out, most parents are clueless what to do next. That's why it's uh, very important for us because this is something that is not taught in school. And for the dads, we know that we are supposed to be the heads of our families. We should lead our family. Kaya lang yung head, di ba? Ito yung head. Uh, ang wife daw natin yung neck. So kontrolado pa rin tayo kung saan tayo pupunta no? ng ating mga asawa. So it's going to be interesting as we talk about Father's Day and my Father's Day uh, message. And I'm going to be sharing my slides here with you. So you've seen uh, my background, uh, background about myself. And I also talk about uh, Father's Day in special occasions. And I've done so um, several times in the past. It's interesting, every time I would show videos on fathers, there are some dads actually in the audience who would be emotional, who would uh, sometimes cry, especially if it's an emotional video. Talking about dads, that's the impact of a father to their child. That's the impact of fathers to their children. Even if we are now no longer here on earth, the impact still remains. And whether that impact is positive or negative, we can choose today because we will have an impact and we have to be intentional about it. So by the way, you can follow me in my social media handles. My message is how to be successful by being unique, by being the best that you can be. So for you to find out if you have truly accepted your child, this is it. Have you truly seen their uniqueness and stop insisting that your child will be like you. So if you're a lawyer, don't tell your child to be a lawyer. If you're a doctor, okay? You know, it's hard for me because I'm a speaker and my daughters, I would train them, I would teach them how to speak. And my eight-year-old, my eldest, actually she started, um, rather my 12-year-old, she started when she was eight. So she spoke in so many places already, but just last year, she told me, Dad, I don't want to speak anymore. And I had to control myself to stop myself from telling her, you know, you're so great, you're so good, you have to continue because I should accept her uniqueness completely. In the movie, The Godfather, yan, okay, napaghahalataan ang edad, nakwento lang sa akin to. In the 70s, um, the godfather was talking to his, one of his sons and he asked him this question, Sonny, do you spend time with your family? And his son said, yes, dad. And he said, good, because a man who doesn't spend time with his family can never be a real man. And I've heard this quotation time and time and time again that no amount of success in business can compensate for failure at home. I'll repeat that. No amount of success in business, in our endeavors, can compensate for failure at home. Because at the end of our lives, and we're not going to see our business partners, our boss, employees, co-workers, who we will be with is our wife and our children. And the worst thing for us is to look to their eyes, at their eyes, and feel and know that we didn't spend time with them. So that's the importance of this message, which is what I call the heart of a father. So here's Father's Day, and we experience this yearly. But what is it to have a heart of a father? So the first point is a father's heart to relate. A father's heart to relate. Okay? Ang first words down ng mga babies, yan, usually it's dada. Papa, Abba, or Baba. My daughter, 
my eldest, ang unang words niya is dada. Pero daw sa Pilipinas, ang una daw lumalabas sa bata, ano, utang, sabi ng mga, joke lang. But, <laughs> the, the, that image itself, it's so amazing. And this was just a few years ago. My kids were so small. But this is them now. It's so fast. If you have babies, spend time with them. Time will fly so fast. Okay? The one in the middle is not my uh, my daughter. She's my wife. So those are our two kids. And we, as much as possible, I spend time with them. We have fun. And it's just amazing that this gift that we were given, we need to have a heart of gratefulness. I lost my business years ago. And when I lost my business, we were bankrupt. This was 2008. I was working very hard. And may pera kami nun. Pero yung time na kailangan, kailangan namin ng pera, dun pa lahat nawala. So I was working hard. And then I realized yung wala na lahat. Why am I working in the first place? And I had to go back to my main reason, which is my family. I was working hard going to this direction. But I've forgotten why I'm doing it, which is here. So I have to go back to why I'm doing what I'm doing. It's all because of the main important is always my family. So they say that men are, uh, we are a man of few words. And uh, alam nyo naman sa mga tatay na experience na to, no? Maybe just like me with my dad. Uh, mga laging sinasabi ng mga tatay, anong akala mo sa akin, balo ng pera? Sino sa inyo nasabihan na kayo ng ganyan? Tapos, ito pa. Uh, one of my favorite. Huwag mong ilipat ang channel. Hindi ako tulog. Nanonood pa ako. Hmm. Nakagano na siya nun. Tapos, yan. Ilan beses sinasabi sa akin ng tatay ko. Para dugo lang. Malayo yan sa bituka. Sino sa inyo nasabihan din kayo ng ganyan? And, ama na. Kundi, tatamaan kayo sa akin. Okay? But you know, it's interesting as we relate to our kids. I'm actually an author of four books, and one of the books I wrote is called Unique Understanding Others by Understanding You. It's about the four different types of personalities, and we, we can relate this to a father and a child. So the animals there are, are well-known animals in the Philippines. So the black with the suit is called an eagle. The one beside him is a rooster, and then a carabao and a tarsier. So these are the four personality types. And I got this from the DISC profiling, D-I-S-C, Dominant, Influential, Steady, and Corrective. So the first one, the dominant father, dominance are those people who make things happen. If there is a wall in front of them and they need to get to the other side, they will look for a way to either smash through that wall. If it's too hard, they will look for a way to go around it, go over it, go under it, whatever it takes. So they combine the motto of Nike and Adidas. Motto of Nike, just do it. Adidas naman, impossible is nothing. So these fathers treat their household like a business. May operations yan. Tapos they're aggressive. They're the strict fathers. And yung mga dads na yan, they want productivity. So yun ang nagiging weakness rin nila. Nagiging overly aggressive, overly strict with their children. And they want things their way. Because their favorite P-word is pa, we're full, favorite song. As you've guessed, my way. So the dominant dads needs to remember that anger is one letter short of the word danger. So be careful with your temper and remember that you are an eagle so you have to let your child fly. Fly eventually on its own. For a dominant child, a dominant child is someone who is aggressive also. And what you need to teach them is this. Dr. Henry Cloud psychologist spoke about success in a school. And then one mother in the Q&A uh, portion asked him, Dr. Cloud, what is the most important thing that we should teach our children about success? Dr. Henry Cloud answered, well, if I have a child and I'll teach him about success, I'll teach him how to fail. The mom was dumbfounded. This is a success seminar. We'll teach our child how to fail? Yes. Because your child will fail, and it's better to teach them how to fail well. So for them not to take failure personally, and not also to take accomplishments personally in terms of making it part of their identity. So with these children, they might become sore losers because they always want to win. 
teach them that winning is good, but life is not just about winning. It is about their character. So the second or the influential father, they are the gregarious because roosters with crow. And among influential, ganyan din sila. Masayahin sila. They love people. They want to be around people. And in a way, they are full of ideas. They're creative, innovative. Yun naman ang weakness sila. Because they're full of ideas, they can easily get distracted. Okay, yan yung mga dads na makakalimutin. Nagpa-park sa basement 1, hinahanap yung kotse sa basement 3. So sila din yung ngayong quarantine, medyo nababaliw na. Kasi gusto lang nahakakita ng maraming tao. And you know our situation now. So their favorite P word is popular, favorite song, Don't Worry, Be Happy. So the influential fathers, they are fun to be with. Para silang barkada. But remember that you are, yes, you can be a friend of your child, but you are first and foremost their parent. For an influential child, what that child needs is attention and focus. Because in school, they are the most likely to succeed. Kaya lang pag nag-graduate na nag-work, wala silang focus. Kailangan turuan nyo sila ng focus and help them to be disciplined because they have so much potential in them. And for them to realize, the influential child, that their value does not, is not dependent on what others think of them. Kasi they can be people pleasers that way. So the next personality is called the steady carabao. The steady father, yan naman yung mga dads na uh, tahimik lang, yan yung steady lang, go with the flow. They love to listen, okay? Their favorite P-word is peaceful. Favorite song? We are the world. Yun din ang weakness ng mga steady fathers. Because they lack, they, they don't really discipline their children as much. They're lenient. It's difficult for them to make major decisions. Kaya kung mag-asawa, steady yung, yung ano, husband, steady yung wife. Yan. Minimum order time yan sa restaurant mga isang oras. Okay? My wife is actually a steady carabao. So minsan naglalakad kami, malilate na kami sa meeting. Pagtingin ko, ang layo-layo pa, yung walang sense of urgency. But uh, what I love about my wife is that when we lost everything, ganyan din ang mga steady. Ang mga steady, hindi sila nawiwindang ng pressure. Okay? But another weakness of the steady carabao is that they can't express their emotions well enough. So if you have a steady child, the steady child is just chill. Chillax. Relax lang. Ang motto nila, why stand when you can sit? Hindi pa tapos yun. Why sit when you can lie down? Pero mark my words, ha? if you have a steady child, be patient with them. You have to draw out from them. Because a steady child, once they find out what they want, they will be laser focused. One of my good friends, uh, Marika Reyes Poon, the wife of Richard Poon, <clears throat> um, she is a high steady carabao. And she told me, you know, Jason, kaya ko pala natapos yung pagdo-doktor kasi I want to honor my parents. Steady lang. And she wants to also write a book one day to encourage women that it's not what happens to you, it's how you take it. So yan ang mga steady carabaos for you. And finally, this is the corrective tarsier. So for the corrective tarsier, they're the analytical. Okay? Ang mga tarsiers, they're analytical like the corrective who sees who sees things in 3D, sometimes 4D. Tapos analytical, they love numbers, they love statistics. Yan yung mga children na pagdating sa IQ, nag excel Pagdating sa traditional school, nag excel sila. So if you're a father like that, your favorite P-word is perfect. Favorite song, you are perfect. Yan ang challenge ng mga correctives. They want the perfect marriage, the perfect wife, the perfect family. And there is no such thing as perfection. In fact, kung ikaw ay corrective father, hindi ka rin perfect. So you have to strive for excellence instead and accept failure as part and parcel of success. So, yung weakness nila is analysis paralysis, sa kaka-analyze sa paralyze, and they can come off as a bit pessimistic. For the corrective child, ang mga corrective sa man, sila naman yung mga nag excel nga, no? they love thinking. But they can be trapped in their own minds. The correctives are the most susceptible to depression. Kaya if you have a child like that, okay, encourage them not to think too much. My eldest is actually a corrective tarsier, and she thinks and she thinks and she thinks nonstop. So be careful when you actually relate to these children. Having said that, I wanna call my ten-year-old daughter 
Okay, her name is Alexa, and he, she will be sharing a little bit more about her and her sister. Come on, Alexa. Hello, everyone. My name is Alexa, and no, I am not his wife. I am his daughter. Hello, everyone. My name is Alexa again, and today I'm going to speak about me and my sister. When we were very young, we really loved chocolates. But one day my dad said, no more chocolates for you too. But there was a big box of chocolates that my dad's, my dad's friend bought for him. And my, my sister, she was so desperate to get one that she said, Daddy, can I buy some chocolates? And he said, no. Daddy, can I nip some chocolates? No. Daddy, can I melt some chocolates, then drink it? Definitely not. But for me, I'm very different. I would scream, Dad, there's an accident. And then he would be rushing down and saying, Alexa, what's the matter? What's the matter? What is? And he said, and I said, I accidentally ate some chocolate. And if you're wondering what kind of sports we do, I do Taekwondo and my sister does ballet. The only reason why I did Taekwondo was because I went to this wedding, wedding where the bride did a martial art called Wushu. There was kicks, there was punches, and there was swords. I loved it, my, but my sister, she was terrified and then at the end, my dad said, Alexa, Gabby, you want to do wushu? And I said, yes. And my sister said, dad, danger is not my game. And if you're wondering what kind of Father's Day gift I gave to my dad was those characters, this he just explained to you, the carabao, the eagle, and the chicken, I mean rooster, and the what do you call that again? The Tarshir. Tarshir. Those things with big eyes. And last time I gave my father a father gift, a uh, Father's Day gift, it was massage. I said, because every time my dad said, what do you want from me whenever I massage him? Because every time I massage him, I would say, Daddy, I'll massage you in one condition. And he said, what? I would say, can I sleep in your room tonight? Or I would say, can I watch? Can I play a game? Can I have a new phone? And he would definitely say no phone. But but one one day when it was Father's Day, he was like, Alexa, what do you want from me? And then I said, but daddy, yeah, I'm just wanting to massage you because it's Father's Day. It's also because I love you. But then at the end, at the end, he would, I would say, Dad, it's okay. It's okay if you don't pay me, huh? But it's also okay if you pay me. And that's the difference of me and my sister. Goodbye. <laughs> you forgot to tell them. No. <laughs> so, obviously, my daughter is a high, influential rooster. And, you know, this is something that you have to be reminded as a parent. Remember that your children, we should love them equally. In seminars, if I ask parents if they love their children equally, everyone will say yes. But if I ask them, who among you, you treat your children equally, everyone will say yes again. That's wrong. The first one is correct. We should love our children equally. But the second one is we should treat them differently. Why? Because they are different from each other. Okay. So my two daughters, I treat them not the way I want to be treated, the golden rule, but I treat them this way, okay? I actually have another book. It's called Unique Youth, and I introduce a fifth character. It's called The Learned Chameleon. In other words, a chameleon changes its features, and we should do the same and adjust to our kids. As dads, treat them the way not as you want to be treated, but treat them the way they want to be treated. That's a unique rule for you. So relating to them, we have to be students of our children. Did you know that? We have to be students of our children. 
So the second point is a father's heart to lead. We are leaders. The dads are leaders. So as you lead your children, do you know how powerful a dad's impact is? In fact, in, in families with children in father absent homes are five times more likely to be poor. Wow. And then compared to married couple families, there's only around 7.8% in poverty compared to female household families around 38.4%. And the higher odds of incarceration, drug use, teen pregnancy, okay, and also physical, emotional, educational neglect, the odds, the odds become much, much, much higher if the father is absent in the home. So dad really matters. Dad really matters. Okay? So as a dad, when you lead them, remember, there's two kinds of mindsets, growth mindset and fixed mindset. This is from Carol Dweck, psychologist, success psychology of 30, 40 years. She said that if you will motivate your children as much as possible, okay, do not praise their talent as much. Do not praise their talent as much. Yung kanilang talino, yung kanilang galing. Kasi pag yan ang pinipraise natin sa kanila, they will prove to you na matalino sila, magaling, ayaw nila mag-fail. So pag nag-fail sila, yun ang, ano, ang magiging cage nila na hindi sila matalino. So, the difference in our vernacular, okay, sa ating lengguahe, fixed mindset, pinanganak ako na mahirap, mamatay ako na mahirap. Growth mindset, pinanganak ako na mahirap, kasalanan ko kung namatay ako na mahirap. So, dapat daw, ang ginagawa natin, pinupuri natin, is this. My eldest is a ballerina, and after her show, lalapitan ko yan. So sabihin ko sa kanya, you know, Gabby, you did well, you were great on stage, you did so good, and she will look at me. And then I'll tell her, you know why? Sasagot yan sa akin, yes, daddy, I know. Because I practiced, because I worked hard. Dapat daw ang pinupuri natin, letter E ang umpisa. Okay? In the comments, you can put it there. Letter E. Effort. Yung effort nila ang importante kasi yung effort na kokontrol natin eh. Yung talino tsaka yung galeng hindi natin na kokontrol. But lahat ng mga successful people, athletes that are very successful, it is because of their effort. Nililiwanin ko lang ha, E is effort. May isa kasi akong seminar, sabi ko letter E ang umpisa. May sumagot, attitude, sabi ng ganun. So letter E, effort, growth mindset, they can grow and grow as long as they put in the hard work. And here's another thing that we can lead them by. Remind your children, by the way, dads, remind yourself also the difference between self-confidence and self-esteem. Okay? Self-confidence galing yan dun sa growth mindset. Kung gano ka ka-hardworking, tataas ang confidence mo. You will be more confident if you work very hard. The late Kobe Bryant works very hard. That's why he's so confident. He shoots 1,000 shots every day. Kung hindi ka pa maging confident yan, ewan ko na lang. Pero ang self-esteem magkaiba. Self-esteem is your value as a person. Tell your child that no matter what happens, your child is extremely valuable. That you love them not because of their accomplishments, not because of their talent, their intellect, but you love them as who they are. Because in God's eyes, they are extremely valuable. Yun ang pagkakaiba ng dalawa. Kaya kapag ngayong covid ang daming mga naapektuhan kapag ang self-confidence at self-esteem magkadikit yan, babagsak din ating demeanor, mawalan din tayo ng purpose sa buhay kasi binibase natin yung ating worth as a person with our possessions, with our wealth, with our fame, with our power, with what we have. That should not be the case. This is the difference between the two. Self-confidence to trust oneself, self-esteem to value oneself. An outward projection and inward perspective built on achievement, self-confidence. Self-esteem built on personal worth. Interpersonal versus intrapersonal. Okay? So leading them is being able to tell them also that your child, my child, or my children, they're leaders. They're leaders. And teach them how to be one. So in the book... In the movie itself, The Pursuit of Happiness, portrayed by Will Smith, Chris Gardner said, don't even let somebody tell you you can't do something. 
not even me. You got a dream. You got a dream. And you, people, you got to protect it. People can't do something themselves. They want to tell you that you can't do it. You want something, go get it, period. Because they were playing basketball and he told his son, oh, I'm an average basketball player, so change your dreams. So, you know, and then he said this. He said this. I had a privilege to meet uh, Chris Gardner himself when he came here to the Philippines. And he told the, the true story that his child, his boy in the movie, in real life, he was only around one years old. But they made him uh, around, I think, mga seven or eight because they wanted to have a dialogue. The very things that he wanted to tell his child when his child was a baby. Tutulog sila sa, ano, sa CR, na mga subway, kasi wala talaga silang pera. But eventually, because of how much he loves his child, one day, he came back up again. And his self-esteem rose. So, a father's heart naman to provide. Okay? So, this is the third point. A father's heart to provide. Alam niyo naman to, mga dads. Uh, iPhone, iPad, iPad, iPad. Okay? iPad. Pag kinatanong ko yung children ko, why do you love dad? Of course, daddy. Because you pay for everything. Hindi ko alam kung matatouch ako, no? Or... Uh, ano, malulungkot ako. Okay? Hindi ko alam kung matatouch ako or malulungkot ako. So, listen to this. Ah. This is very important. Okay? Um, when we lost everything, this is a book I wrote called Determined. Take Control of Your Finances and Your Life. It was Miss Connie Reyes who actually encouraged me to write the book in one prayer meeting. And ang nyari dyan, bumagsak yung confidence ko. But when I recovered and retained it, I grab hold onto one of these verses in the Bible that is so powerful. And this is it. Sabi dyan, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. Kasi minsan ang mahirap sa atin, families, kapag father ka, di ba? Husband, wife, and you have children. Sa Pilipinas, meron tayong ginatawag na sandwich generation. Ang ginagawa natin, si tatay, Oh, uh, husband, sinusuportahan yung pamilya niya. Si wife naman, sinusuportahan din yung pamilya niya. So ilang pamilya na yung sinusuportahan natin? Diba? Tatlo na. Doon pumapasok yung cycle of poverty. Kasi mangyayari niyan, yung ating mga anak, ganun din yung gagawin nila sa mga anak nila. So we have to find a way to support our children na tayo nagsusuport sa kanila, hindi yung eventually, pag tumanda tayo, sila yung susuporta sa atin. Yun yung biblical. And you can do that as you prepare financially. Okay? Kasi isa yan sa mga top na pinag-aawayan ng mag-asawa. If I ask you, is saving a choice or a need? Most people would say it's a need. But there are some people who says it's a choice. This is Michael Jackson and if I ask you face-to-face, is Michael Jackson successful? Your answer is yes. Okay? A resounding yes. Is he very successful? No. Very, very, very successful. But did you know that Michael Jackson, when he died, it was reported that he owed around $300 million. Ganun kalaki yung utang niya. Kasi si Michael Jackson doesn't have any income outside of his profession. So gasto siya ng gastos, wala siyang mga investments. And you don't earn your way to financial freedom. I don't care who you are, including myself, all of us combined, probably, all of our viewers now, we will not out-earn Michael Jackson. Right? But this guy squandered everything and you are actually richer than him when he passed. All because he doesn't have an investment. So in order for you to do that, remember, investing is no longer a choice. It is now a need. So where do you invest? There are many uh, investment instruments. One of them is uh, mutual funds, okay, the stock market. So those are types of investments. I myself have mutual funds. And those are investments that is very uh, good in terms of their value and also because it is also uh, liquid in a sense. Kaya yan ang isang iisipin nyo, especially when you lead your children when it comes to finances. And teach your children how to handle money. Mahaga pa lang. Pag-usapan nyo na. Yung anak ko, kausap ko kanina, sabi niya, Daddy, you owe me. Ah. What? 10 pesos. Why? Yeah, I massaged you yesterday. Aba, grabe, rumaraket, minamasahe ako. Tapos may listahan. Yung mami niya may utang na na 30 pesos. Okay? 
So as young as they are, I'm praying, Lord, I want my children to be eventually entrepreneurs. <laughs> so, but it's also, again, up to them. So spend less than what you make and invest the difference. The saying that you have to spend less than what you make and do it for a long time, then you'll be financially independent. That's not true anymore because you have to invest the difference today. So my next point is this. A father's heart to love and protect. A father's heart to love and protect. You know, the two important things for our child or our children, for girls, it's the words, am I lovely? For boys, is do I have what it takes? Sa isang lalaki, tuwang-tuwa na sila, kahit hindi sila sabihan ng tatay nila ng I love you. Pero ang mga lalaki, mga bata, tuwang-tuwa na yan pag sinabihan sila ng tatay nila na anak, I am proud of you. Kahit na anong accomplishments mo, I am proud of you for who you are. And be you. Do you. Be unique. For women naman, for girls, am I lovely? Okay? Because they want the attention of their father. So fathers, you should be the first one to give your children flowers. Pag Valentine's Day, give them flowers. Sige kayo, pag iba nang nagbigay dyan, isang usapan na yon. Okay? So remember that our children, when we love and protect them, that love should not be dependent on their accomplishments in life. That love should be an unconditional love. It should be an unconditional love. And don't feel bad also because we learn this along the way. Diba? Yung mga parents, parang di mo alam yung ginagawa mo minsan. A dad doesn't know what he's doing. And then eventually, yung mga anak mo, tumanda na, alis ng bahay, nag-asawa na, biglang, oy, tama ba yung ginawa ko? Uh, but that's the wonderful thing about this. There is no hard and fast rule how to be a parent. There is no hard and fast rule to be a mother, to be a father. But what's important is that unconditional love, no matter what. Um, a man who's very busy and he just realized how busy with he, he, he is, he thought of this, this idea to get a jar and fill it with marbles. And then he counted and placed 143 marbles in that jar. And he counted how many Saturdays his daughter would leave after high school and move to another state, which will take around 40, 143 Saturdays. So every Saturday, that jar, he would take out one marble, and it was a powerful picture for him, and it is a reminder that time is limited. That the most important things in life, they are not things. The most important things in life, it's relationships. Especially our relationship with our family. So this is my last point. A father's heart to leave a legacy. And this is the most important. Okay, Listen to this. It's good that you will leave your children inheritance. You will leave them with money. But more than that, the most important thing that you will leave your children is your legacy. This is my uh, dad, my mom, and that's me, that cute, handsome boy over there. And my dad, I remember the first time I told my dad I love him was when I was 23 years old. My dad is pure Chinese. My mom is mestiza. So I'm half Chinese. Among the Chinese were stoic. So my dad, not even once, told me that he loved me. So when I was 23 years old, naglakas loob ako. Sabi ko, dapat masabi ko na sa dad ko. Kahit hindi sinasabi sa akin. Kasi mamaya kunin na ni Lord, hindi ko pa masabi. So nagkataon, kami dalawa, nasa bahay kami. Walang tao. Just us. And then, sabi ko sa sarili ko, today's the day. Di nilapitan ko yung dad ko to tell him that I love him and that I appreciate him. Alam mo yon pag hindi totoo, bilis ang sabihin, di ba? Uy, I love you. Pero pag totoo na, pag lapit ko sa kanya, yung puso ko halos sumabas dun sa dibdib ko, jig jig, jig jig, jig jig. And then, I told myself, teka, warm up muna ako. 
I waited for a few minutes and then tried to approach my dad again. Jig, 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 jig. Second time, third time, fourth time. On the fifth try, I told myself, no guts, no glory. I have to do this. So paglapit ko sa dad ko, sabi ko, Daddy, um, siya nga pala. Uh, pwede ba kita makausap sandali? Sabi niya ano yun? Pwede ba patay mo muna sandali yung TV? And I told him, Dad, um, gusto ko lang magpasalamat sa lahat na nagawa mo sa family natin. I really appreciate it. E nakita ko lahat ng mga sacrifices mo. Thank you. So sobrang tense ko, nakalimutan kong sabihin sa dad ko na mahal ko siya. So yung ginawa ko, bumaba ako sa kwarto. Tapos pagbaba ko ng kwarto, yung dad ko, after a few minutes, may kinuha dun sa kwarto. Pagpasok niya, sabi ko sa sarili ko, naumpisaan ko na, ilubos-lubosin ko na. Nilapitan ko rin yung dad ko. Sabi ko, dad, siya nga pala nakalimutan kong sabihin sa'yo. Mahal na mahal pala kita. Yung tatay ko parang nakakita ng aswang. Talagang nasyak siya. Pero ever since that time, nagbago yung relationship namin. Pag wala akong pera, lalapit lang ako, Daddy, wala kasi akong pera eh. Magkanong kailangan mo, anak? Ayan. Sa mga sudyante, pag may sudyante dito ang nanonood, tell your dad that you love him. Guaranteed 30% increase sa allowance. But after that, our relationship changed. My dad and I started having coffee, sometimes dates together, just us. And I gave him a cell phone, me and my siblings. Tapos sabi sa akin ng dad ko, anak, sayang lang yung pera mo. Pera nyo. Hindi ko kailangan yung cellphone para lang sa mga bata yan. Pero yung natuto mag-text, text ako, sabi ko, daddy, saan ka na? Text back sa akin, anak, dito na me. Minsan magte-text yan, anak, eat na you. One day, my dad was diagnosed with cancer. And he was in and out of the hospital. But my dad is very strong. At 68 years old, he still plays basketball. Full court, every Sundays. And then after that, he stopped. One day, my sister called me at 10 p.m. I was still out and told me si daddy nasa USD's hospital. So, dumaretso ako dun. Pagdating ko dun, hinahanap ko yung room niya, hindi ko makita. Ayun pala, my dad was in the ICU. So, I saw my dad vulnerable for the first time with a respirator to help him breathe. And natakot na ako. I left the hospital at around 2 a.m. I came back at 8 a.m. Pagdating ko doon, nandun na yung lahat ng kapatid ko and my mom. And our mom. And the doctor said, i-gather niyo na yung buong family. Malapit na. And yung maghuhuling bili na kaming magkakapatid, one by one, we approached our dad. That is the time I realized that my three brothers, were five, four boys, one girl, my three brothers have never told our dad that they love him. Not even once. And I was there, I was crying, but I had so much peace because I was able to tell my dad how much I feel for him. He passed more than 10 years ago, never told me that he loves me. But I know he does, or he did. But my dad showed me without saying it that he is so proud of me. And that made a big impact in my life. So if you're a father, I'm happy with my brothers that even on my dad's deathbed, pag wala ka daw malay, ang huling nawawala yung sense of hearing. So I'm believing that the time when my brothers told him that they love him, my dad heard him, them, and at least nasabi nila. But if you will take away one thing in this seminar, it's this. Tell your loved ones that you love them. If you're a father, as much as possible, tell your children that you love them. And if you, your dad is there, ako hindi ko naman sasabi sa dad ko because my dad is not here anymore. Di ba? I love you, dad. Wala na eh. Pag sumagot yan, mas nakakatakot. Right? But if you have a chance, even if your father is not lovable, the Bible says that we should honor our father and mother. Honor is not something that is, that parang ano siya yung respect is earned. But honor is not something that you give because they have earned it. Honor is something that you give to them. And the Bible also says that you will live a long and blessed life. That's one secret as you honor your father. So before we end, as promised, Michiko, we will be accepting uh, questions, do a little Q&A, and then we will, I will land this talk and finish. Dr. Jason, so as promised uh, a while ago, um, we're going to 
read the comments of our or the questions of our viewers. So the first question is from Yapi Domingo. How to win your son's heart? My son is close to his mom. It's really not quality. It's not quality time. It's quantity time. The amount of time that you spend with your child. Kaya siguro mas close kay mom is because si mom yung mas nagsuspend ng time sa kanya. So that's what you have to balance your uh, time uh, management. You prioritize your ch child first. And I believe that once you do that slowly, you will see that your child will become closer to you. Okay. Thank you, Yapi, for this for that question. Um, the next one is from Jani Carigo. What are your struggles as being a dad during this quarantine? <laughs> well, my, my, my daughter, yung kanina nagsalita, minsan tuno, tumutulo na yung luha. I want to see my friends. Kasi influential eh. Kasi niya, may mga kalaro. And then my, my daughter naman, my eldest, laging, ano, laging dad, I'm bored. And I'll tell them, wow, that's good that you're bored. That's your only problem. But there are many pro people outside that uh, they're having bigger problems than us because of this pandemic. And we're fortunate. We have to be grateful that we're okay. And uh, we're okay as a family. But, you know, well, the, the important thing right now that we can teach our children is really about gratitude. So every day, we would have our quiet time while we're eating our breakfast. Okay? We talk about uh, life. We talk about the Bible. And what we would do, each one of us would share the five things that they're grateful for today. Mm -mm. Five things. So, hindi pala today, yesterday, kasi morning namin ginagawa. So, magsishare, isa-isa. And yun ang ano eh, importante. Kasi, pansinin nyo ito ah, hindi mo pwedeng ipagsabay yung negativity sa gratefulness. Kapag, kapag ikaw ay grateful, hindi pumapasok yung negativity eh. Yun yung way for you to counter that. Right? And there are so many things that we can be grateful for. Just think right now, you can easily come up with 10 things. And if you think harder, you will come up with more than 100 things to be grateful for. Okay. Thank you, Sir Jason. Another question is from Clarissa Glino. My dad is not expressive or talkative, even unlike my mom. What are your thoughts po on how to best express our love for him? Uh, who asked the question, Michiko? Clarissa Glino. Oh, you know, my dad is not expressive as well. But when I made, uh, when I actually did that, when I told my dad that I love him, um, and mind you, uh, I'm 5'11". <laughs> Hindi namin kultura yon. Pero ako yung nag-first step. Ako yung gumawa nun. I believe that if you also do that, you won't regret it for the rest of your life. It is going to be one of the most important decisions that you will make in your life. Kasi minsan, na-assume natin eh, yung love. Ah, alam na niya yan. Hindi na kailangan marinig. Hindi na kailangan sabihin. Pero pag binarbalize mo, pag sinabi mo, there's power in that. Eh. And it breaks down. It breaks walls that we have erected in the past. Mm -hmm. So, yun siguro ang pwede mong gawin. And uh, after that, unti, unti, gawin mong part ng kultura. Kaya yung dad ko, yung my dad passed. My mom passed away around five years ago. So, yung mom ko almost every day, sinasabihan ko ng I love you. After that, and naging part ng kultura namin yun. So thank you, Clarissa Glino. Next question or our last question is from Ruth Chaneco. Should I imitate my husband's disciplining techniques? My son follows him agad with just one command. <laughs> um, maybe your your husband is a dominant. That's why. Well, we're different, and parents are different also. So what we actually have to understand is. If we discipline our children, are they really following us because they want to follow us? Or are they doing it because they're just afraid of the consequences? Mm -mm. So, parang yung uh, illustration ng bata, sinasabihan siya, okay, go to your room. I don't want to go to my room. I'm playing. Go to your room. I don't want to play. Go to your room now or else. Okay, mommy, I'll go to my room. But my spirit is still right here. So, minsan, nagiging negative yung effect. Alam nyo ba yon yung mga bata na masunurin? Tapos bigla pagdating na teenager, nagrebelde. Kasi hindi nila na-express talaga yung sarili nila. So when we discipline our children, we have to be careful also to understand uh, where they are now and draw out from them. As I mentioned, we have to be students of our children. So dapat maintindihan rin natin sila. 
Okay. Um, Sir Jason, meron pa po palang isang question. Last sure. na po. So, um, it's from hmm. Brian Aquino. Why is it so hard to express your feeling with your dad? Parang nakakahiya. Kasi, ano eh, yung kultura natin, lalo na pag mga lalaki, inuruan kasi tayo na dapat hindi ka umiiyak, macho ka. Diba? Sometimes the dads would would say that. Uh, actually, ako, hindi naman ako umiiyak din. Uh, ano lang, madalas ang pagpawisan yung mata ko. So, pinagpapawisan lang naman yung mga mata natin, mga lalaki. <laughs> Kaya yung mga anak natin, we have to teach them na it's okay to express your emotions. It's okay to cry if need be. Diba? And it doesn't make you less of a man if you do that. Kaya yung macho-macho effect natin na ganun, um, it's really finding our, ano, finding our uniqueness na pag lalaki tayo, we are still men if we express our feelings of love to our family, to our children, to our wife. And that's really okay. And once it becomes part of your culture, unti-unti makikita mo mayroong transformation pati sa behavior ng ating mga anak, ating family, um, even probably our parents if we do that. Okay. Um, thank you, Sir Jason, for that um, answer. And then um, thank you for all of our viewers for all of your questions then. Um, so before we end our program, we would like to ask Sir Jason for one last message for our audiences. Hey, thank you, Michigo. I'm going to share my slide right now. Thank you. And again, thank you so much, uh, family, for having me. And may you continue this advocacy of um, adding value and inspiring uh, your clients, your viewers, and your, uh, your staff, your team, because we need this more than any time mm. in history. Yes, sir. So this is my, uh, a trip we had last year. And... This is in Bukidnon. My dad, the impact that my dad made to me. Mm -hmm. uh, before he passed, my dad is actually a was actually a purchaser, purchasing siya sa isang malaking company. During that those days, it was like the SM in those days. So it's a mall. They have um, they have malls, and he's purchasing. And my uncle owns it. So my dad or oh, Mataas ang posisyon ng dad ko nun. Tapos, my dad never received any bribes, mm -mm. not even gifts. So, yung a week or two weeks before he passed, he was talking to his friend. His name is Tony. My dad's name is uh, Jimmy. Sabi niya, Tony, naisip ko lang, no? Ngayon kasi, hindi masyadong malaki yung naiwan ko sa pamilya ko. What if ginaya ko yung mga kasama kong purchasing na ngayon, umama na talaga? Ako kasi hindi ako tumatanggap ng kahit ano, hindi ako tumatanggap ng mga bribes, gifts. And then Tony told him, you know Jimmy, maganda yung ginawa mo. Kasi ang pinaka-importanteng iiwan natin sa pamilya natin, hindi yung inheritance. Ang pinaka-importante, yung legacy. I found out about that three days after my dad passed. Yung narinig ko yun, sobrang laki ng impact sa akin. Hindi ko alam na after a few years, I would have a business that would go bankrupt. Eh yung na-bankrupt yun, million yung nawala sa amin, walo yung credit card ko na may utang, okay, zero-zero kami, mga nganak yung wife ko, pero nasa utak ko that time, I want to honor my dad. That no matter what, I will pay my debts because my dad lived a life of integrity. And that is the one word that my dad left with me. Integrity. Na yun ang gusto kong dalin habang nabubuhay ako, na pag ako nawala na dito sa mundo, that's the legacy that I will leave my children. Because at the end of our lives, the most important thing that we will leave behind to the people, to our loved ones, to our children, to our family, is our legacy. So with that, everyone, thank you so much. Again, God bless you. Thank you, Sir Jason. And thank you to all of our viewers. Um, please do not forget to tune in our Facebook page for more of our upcoming promos and webinars and to stay updated with what we have in store for you. Again, this is Michiko Evangelista greeting all of you a great weekend again. Bye!